Hello and welcome, long time no see. So I've been kind of holding off on doing Spark AR videos until we got to a point where there's some new exciting features or something that I kind of wanted to show you. So in this video, I'm just going to go through the new Spark AR desktop player, which came out at the time of recording this video this week. And it basically allows us to finally tackle a challenge we've always had issues with, which is how do we create something that's augmented reality um, for a museum or art installation or a kind of hand-in for kind of student work, etc. Typically, the way we used to do it about a year ago is we'd have to get a tablet and then mirror the Instagram or Facebook output to a monitor or basically crop the Spark AR player emulator. Uh, and that was just never ideal. Uh, finally, fantastically, there is actually now a dedicated application. Uh, it is a little bit buggy, so if during this video it crashes a couple of times, don't be surprised. Um, you will require version 104 of Spark AR or newer. And basically, it's not included in the package. You do have to go to a dedicated website, which I'll put in the link down below. And I'll show you the steps of how to get this up and going. Okay, so let's say we have our Spark AR project. So all I've done here is I've just taken the head decoration example and just made it so when the user chooses the native UI picker, it changes between three different, uh, basically 3D models that are occluded. Like so, these are all just sourced from Sketchfab. Again, this is nothing overly amazing. This is just something that's created really quickly just to illustrate a point. Now, historically, if we wanted to have this as part of an interactive display, we would either have to screen capture the simulator window here by basically using something like OBS or another capture program to take a live feed from this window here, or we would have to have a dedicated tablet like an iPad or an Android tablet that would run the actual finished filter on and then mirror it or output the display to a larger screen uh, through the actual tablet itself. Now these were far from ideal, these were solutions but not good solutions. Uh, thankfully, finally as of version 104 there is now a solution to actually allow us to expand our augmented reality filters to a larger screen without having to use dodgy workarounds. However, at the time of recording this video it's still a little bit buggy, so just bear that in mind. So in order to be able to use this dedicated Spark AR player, which is similar to the iOS or Android version that you could use before if you don't want to deploy your filter to Instagram straight away, you would need to go to the Spark AR website and the download section. Now this is not included when you download the AR Studio. This is actually a separate application. Uh, and historically, all we had before was these two here for Android and iOS. Now we have this new option for Mac and Windows. This does require you to use version 104 of the Spark AR Studio in order for your filters to be able to carry it across. Um, you can carry across older filters into this player, however you may have some issues depending on which version it is you're trying to import across. Obviously newer versions should be compatible with the player. So you simply choose your operating system and download it as you would any other program. And I've already downloaded it onto my machine here. I'm just going to open it up. Uh, you can see I've just got some ones here I just quickly tested just to see how it works. And this is a basically the player application that you'd be familiar with with iOS or Android, uh, but you need to have it as open as a separate program. Now, at the time of recording this, there is a slight um, issue. You, when you open up an application from the Spark AR Studio, instead of exporting it on a device, uh, like you would typically to your iPhone or etc. Um, you should, if you have the application play or the open in the background, you should have this option here for local host, which should open it up in the play application on your desktop. However, that doesn't always appear. So sometimes you may just have to save your project. So this is your AR project file. I'm just going to save this onto my desktop um, as is. I'm not going to worry too much about that. So if you can't use the test on the device send to local host and that's not there, you can save the AR project file 
and in the actual player, go to open and navigate to where your application is. Now, as you can see, when I go to file open, my player application crashes at this point in time. So this is a bug at the moment with the player application. Um, sometimes a restart on your machine will fix that. Um, however, I'm trying to avoid that if I can. So let's see if we have any luck without uh, having to do a system restart. So now we opened it. Um, I click on the get start player, but you notice it's not now letting me have the option for localhost. So I'm going to have to restart my machine, I'm afraid, or Okay, so I've had to do a system restart, so I've had to start restart my computer and reopen the projects basically because the Spark IR player crashed. So like I said, it is only just come out, these are teething issues, it's, your mileage may vary depending on your OS, your system, and obviously what version you're running at that point in time. So I've got the Spark AR player open up in the background. I'm going to click on the center local host because that's currently there for me. Like I said, if that wasn't there, you can just save your AR project and in the player just click open and then open the actual AR project itself and it'll work. I'm going to use the send because it's there for me at the moment, so let's see if this works. And what this should do is it should create a kind of emulation window similar to this, except to give you a bit more control than you would typically get from the emulator within the studio application. It will uh, allow you to choose which camera you're using, so whether you're using um, an inbuilt webcam or an external webcam. It will also allow you to choose um, microphone input, but also allow you to use a preview file for the audio input as well. So again, if you're in a, in a sort of museum setting and you've got a large screen, instead of having to spend thousands and tens of thousands making a dedicated AR application with something like Unity and Vuforia or a lot of other third party applications out there, you can just kind of do it on the cheap with Spark AR. And with the added luxury that you could also, if you wanted to, share your finished product on Instagram or Facebook. So basically, you may notice that I've basically had to cancel the sending via localhost in the Space IR Studio. It just basically wasn't having it. So I've had to do what I've mentioned before. I've had to actually open up the actual finished AR project. And hopefully uh, the AR player won't crash this time. And it hasn't. Fantastic. So there you can see myself. Uh, over here, you've got the option to choose your input for your camera. I'm not going to attempt switching any of those because this can also, at this point in time, cause it to crash on some systems. And I'm not going to restart my computer again if I can help it. We have the option for audio here where we can change our audio input or disable the microphone. If I click on drop down here, you can also add a preview file, which again, I'm not going to do because this can crash at the time of making this video. We can pause and resume like we can in the AR Studio. We can also restart. Uh, you can also just choose here to click and open other files if you wanted to. And you'll notice that if I click on this little enter full screen button here, oh, there we go, we're now full screen. So the AI is still tracking my ha head. My file is as it would be viewed within the emulator window or on a mobile device. I can choose the native UI picker down here to choose my asset still. That's not quite aligned correctly, but anyway, that's my fault for not actually spending more time on the project, not actually the player's issue. Um, but yeah, there we go. We can create our AR effects or interactive inst elements within our desktop environment that could then be blown onto any size screen. Uh, you can also use still things like tap functionality. So you can see I've got this little white circle here that I can move around, which is my mouse. This I can tap onto these uh, various buttons here. I could also add rectangles that could have interactive elements. Again, similar to uh, as you would on a phone screen, you would tap to kind of change between actions or start playing audio, etc. Um, a few notes to bear in mind is, whoop, let's come out of that for a second, is if we're having any images like on our UI elements, uh, let's just quickly add a rectangle, something not going to kill my machine over. There we go. Uh, we need to make sure that our pinning is set to be in the center of our screen if we want it to be um, scaling to our window. So I'm just going to put this 
in the middle here. I'm going to create a material for it. And make sure I'm just going to create a new layer and make this new layer be at the sort of top. So I'm dragging my new layer to the bottom here. So it's now above everything. There will still be some clipping going on. Uh, that's more to do with the materials. I'm not going to worry too much about that at the moment. Let's create a quick object tap here. Tie this up a little bit. So, and let's say that when this object is tapped, I want the visibility. Uh, I have to create a new null object, aren't I? Create a new null object to control everything in. So I tend to use null objects as kind of uh, overarching controllers. Let's just drag a null. Do, do, do. Drag these onto this new null object. Drag that null object above our occluder. So nothing should have changed, which it hasn't, which is good. And now I can use this null object to control the visibility of all of my nestled assets. Like so. I'm just going to quickly save that. Go back to my player. Nothing has changed, so I need to reopen that project. And the player's crashed. It's early days. Hopefully, uh, it will be a little bit less uh, buggy going forward. There we go. So I've reopened it up now. You can now see my rectangle is in the center of my screen. That's because I pinned it to the middle. Um, Again, play about that as you see fit to where you want to put this. You can pin this to the bottom corner, etc., etc. But if I now click on this, I can now bring up my elements, like so. I can toggle things on or off, and that could also be a trigger to play sound, for example. So that is just a kind of overview of the Spark AR player, including its sort of flaws at the time of recording this. Again, this will probably be fixed in coming revisions. Um, but it is a fantastic welcome addition to now allow us to use our Spark AR effects on larger screens. And if you even had a touchscreen monitor or touchscreen device, it would still work as if I was actually, I could even finger tap the icons on my screen and it'd work as a mouse click, which is amazing again, if you're aiming to illustrate this in kind of larger monitors. And the full screen will scale to whatever window our uh, player is hooked up to, basically. So I've been Steen Fisher. This has been a kind of feature overview video for Spark, and we will be creating some more tutorials in the very near future. So stay tuned, remember to hit that like button and subscribe, and have a Merry Christmas if I don't see you beforehand. Goodbye.